Hello, uh, recently the motor, the electric motor here that uh, operates the circulating pump on this boiler began acting erratically. The, the GE motor that was here um, was at least 20 years old, uh, pretty good shape. I actually ran an amp test on it while it was running and it was actually drawing significantly less than its rated capacity, which would probably be normal anyway, but I couldn't find anything wrong with the motor other than I kind of learned over uh, watching and testing that the start switch inside the motor was malfunctioning. So um, I bought this motor over the internet, believe it or not, and installed it. I still have some wiring um, adjustments to make on it due to the setup that the old motor had. I also added a ground wire to um, secure the grounding of the motor. Uh, the motor runs a little bit noisy. Um, I've made some adjustments to the equipment. It probably is something just to do with the motor. Uh, otherwise, it is operating well. Uh, what I wanted to show you was uh, I have not taken an electric motor apart of this size. The motor shown here is a 1 8 horsepower and I'm going to go um, over to the table where I have the GE motor that I took off. Uh, this is the GE motor that ran the circulating pump on the boiler for the, the whole period that we've owned the house. Um, it, it was very good. It never gave us any operational problems. Uh, we actually had to replace the circulating pump a couple times uh, in 20 years, but the motor shown here um, appears to be in relatively good condition. The motor mounts are, are pretty decent. Um, I think over time they do stiffen up and harden a little bit, but they're still good. Um, there's really nothing I could find about the motor that uh, would make it a junk motor. Uh, it's a 1 8 horsepower, a 1725 RPM. Um, it's rated uh, amp uh, draw is 3 amps. Um, it's been a decent uh, setup. It has a Allen screw um, divot or cut in the shaft here, which is kind of important for driving the circulating pump mechanism um, and coupling over on the boiler. I have taken the long bolts out of this motor and will disassemble it here so, so that maybe all of us can learn something. I've never really, I've worked on industrial motors as a maintenance electrician, but I never really got involved in disassembly the motors were always sent out for repair so this is kind of an experience for me having that I've never had to fool with this stuff um, the problem with this motor was the start switch that's an internal centrifugal driven apparatus that allows the motor to start up using some coil um, uh, additional coil uh, power to get it up to its running speed once the motor is running at its rated speed uh, the switch cuts out uh, due to the speed of the motor and the motor operates on uh, less power so to speak anyway I'm going to pull off the I believe this is called the lead end which has the ar the armature if you want to call it that's actually just the um, um, winding is as as that's called on the back end of this is the partial mechanism of the start switch um, and that's what you would hear when the motor starts. The field of this thing appears to be pretty dirty. I think I'm ad-libbing here to say that that's the field, but it is a disc that's kind of oily, and that's apparently what I've been told happens to these. The bearings on the motor are good. Um, the motor itself, being as old as it is, uh, is dirty inside. Not to a great degree, but enough that I would clean it probably with, with elect, electric spray cleaner, something like that. Um, and then I can remove the back end. And, and of course, the, the bearing is inside here. I believe it's a sleeve bearing. Um, and that's what's on both ends of the motor. Um, there's other information on the nameplate up here as to how to set up the... Um, rotation of the motor also some oiling information very important 
some other details were written on the back end, end of the wire uh, plate. Um, not really very legible at this point. Um, just some information about the electrical hookup. Anyway, um, what's of interest here is the start switch, which is I'm trying to focus in on is this mechanism in here um, being that I have to hold the camera with one and it's kind of tough to show you this but um, that that is part of the switch mechanism right there and that's where these contacts I believe get pitted um, there, there's somewhere there's also the insulation on the wire leading to that switch is burned and actually bare at some point I can fix that that will slide off with this connector here and this switch will come off I hope to show that too in part of this video um, in looking from the inside you get a better picture of the switch back there um, I'm, I'm not really sure right now looking at it what the contact points are uh, I mean just like I said I, this is kind of a learning experience for me but if this helps anyone else that watches the video that's great um, again the motor is relatively clean it operated in a clean environment um, not a real problem with that I believe it's in sound condition um, the wires yeah after so many years the wires are going to begin to uh, harden up the insulation hardens up and, and you might want to you know check all of that if you're going to disassemble something like this uh, that's kind of important the wires of course feed off of the coil mechanism inside here and come through onto this uh, fiberboard bracket that I'm going to remove here or at least remove the switch anyway so that's what I'm going to do next well I have disassembled the wiring bracket that is mounted inside this motor and I'm attempting to show you that I had to use a screwdriver to pin it into position so that I could look at it and show you folks as well um, hopefully from there you can see that um, some of the wiring is corroded the insulation is is hardened and chipped off the wires which would not be good um, the actual contact switch um, for starting the motor is is down inside here um, it is pitted uh, if I can get into a view of where it is here that would be great um, help show you where this is um, and I'm I'm showing you with a light right now where the contact point is This camera is showing it anyway uh, the contact is pitted the surface is worn um, this is how it works and because of that the motor was hanging up in the start position and overheating uh, and that's the problem that we had with it and then it would shut down because it had an overload uh, type of um, cutoff so uh, in order to really fix this because this switch is riveted on this fiberboard mounting wiring mounting I probably would have to replace the entire fiberboard piece here I'm not too sure that's worth it um, it wouldn't probably be less than $25 to find this piece if it even existed so I may have to just consider that this motor is not repairable um, I could go in there and try to clean that contact, but I've got a feeling that the surface of the contact is pitted away, and uh, that's actually what we did in replacing contacts in motors uh, when I was a maintenance electrician, and um, in that case, you, you really can't do much. If the contacts are ruined, uh, they're just ruined. You can't clean them up, so that would be the end of my uh, um movie on on disassembling a motor